according to the code, this is what I do. I assume that the white person, if he or she is able to be a racist, is one. That's an automatic assumption. If they are able to be one, then the person probably is one. But I'm not going to tell them that they are racist, because that would be name calling. But I will say that I suspect they could be one. And I'll tell any white person that who's able to be one. I mean, even white people that have that been around for years, maybe. Class and racial supremacy is a congested, stampeding rabbit creature. It invades the areas of labor, politics, sex, religion, education, entertainment, and law. Unfortunately, some very dangerous ideas can manifest by those who claim they are fighting it. Enters Neely Fuller Jr. He is the author of The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, and in parentheses follows white supremacy. Mr. Fuller has some very unsavory ideas. One, the only form of functional racism that exists among the people of the known universe is white supremacy. Two, regardless of all that has been said or done, the quality of the relationships between white people and black people is and has been a total disaster. I will address not a quote but a concept of his and that is suspect racism. The idea of suspect racism is one that is formally generated by Neely Fuller Jr. though I am sure it has existed well before him. The premise is if a white person is able to be racist, then they are one. If a white person is able to be racist, then they are one. Now, of course, you can substitute white for anyone. Black, Hispanic, Asian. The suspicion is directly linked to genetic composition. This is far from consistent with reason, for it uses the cognitive distortions as its reasoning platform. Here we have three. One, jumping to conclusions. Two, the fortune teller error. And three, mislabeling. Let's start with jumping to conclusions. That is, making a negative interpretation, even though there are no definitive facts that can convincingly support your conclusion. Then next is the fortune teller error. This is when a person anticipates things will turn out badly and substitutes the feeling of being convinced that their prediction is already an established fact for verifiable evidence. And finally, there is mislabeling, which is an extreme form of overgeneralization. However, these cognitive distortions are chased by a belief system, a belief system or a method of belief that we will title default belief. We know that belief does not require evidence. It requires faith and, in some cases, can deny the evidence that experience brings. One who subscribes to a default belief embraces a world view due to a lack of considering any unconventional choices. Unconventional being anything that does not readily come to that individual's mind when processing their interpretation of reality. This is part of the reason for the irrational behavior you will find with certain black people 
who adopt this mindset. However, do not feel neglected, for this mindset can be used, like the belief system of racism, by any person. This is not exclusively used by black people. The result is the abandonment of impartial observation and the empirical method by putting you in doubt. It invites you to question your ability to determine actuality or to use discernment. It does this by presenting the obvious that one may and can be fooled. It also achieves this goal by using a fact. The fact is a deceptive person will produce a confidence game to create a barrier that shields their intention, thereby allowing them to advance their agenda. Neely wants you to think it is dangerous not to accept his world view because someone has to be racist. I am an individualist. I judge individual actions. Obviously, by looking at my videos, you know that I am not blind to the ugliness of the world. However, I do not accommodate the worldview that certain members of mankind should be mentally jailed within my own mind because of the action of others who happen to share their phenotypical traits. One can claim that the best indicator of the future is past behavior. I do think this is valid. This is an individual assessment, not a group one. You cannot account for every person in certain groups due to numerical representation and lack of verifiable information. If trust is earned, then according to your standards, my audience, your standards, and ability to reason, this will determine the probability of being duped by another. No perennial safety net exists that will always allow you to properly assess another's actions or intent. We are all subject to fall for deception. The question is, how do you want to live your life? And do you want to be governed by fear? Do you want to be leery of every action produced? Is it not you who becomes the greatest deceiver by accepting this position? But if they would ask me directly, do I think that they're racist? I say, you probably are one. That's the way I see you. Because it's dangerous to think otherwise. Somebody's got to be a racist. And the chief weapon of a racist is deception. So a white person can fool you for years. They could be a racist, but you not know it, or you don't believe it, on account of all the nice things that they do. But the person can still be a racist, using a Pocahontas analysis. The white people, presumably, who were around Pocahontas, were racist in historical perspective. to do it until the end of white supremacy. That's the criteria. 